Amidst the series of environmental disasters, a biological experiment called Biodome challenges a group of scientists to sustain life contained inside for one year. Unexpectedly, a ludicrous duo accidentally joins them and simulates chaos in the ecosystem. When Doyle loses rock, paper, scissors against his best friend, Bud hits him on the head with a book, hard enough to make him fall to the ground. Afterward, the goofy pair's environmentalist girlfriends, Jen and Monique, arrive to fetch their partners for the Earth Day event at the park. However, Bud informs them about Doyle's supposed accident, which they deliberately planned as an excuse. When the two women check the situation, they see Doyle quivering on the floor, so Jen worriedly rushes to help him. Bud claims his friend is brain dead after accidentally falling from trying to free a fake Mahi Mahi display. However, Monique doubts her boyfriend's ridiculous story while Doyle pretends to be out of it. When Monique recounts the guy's promise to join them on a cleanup drive, Bud urges them to act locally by helping Doyle recover. Suddenly, Jen realizes that a book had hit Doyle and exposes their lie. Frustrated by the pair of fools, the women accuse them of weaseling out of their every invite on Earth Day and storm out. On the road home, Monique laments about dating Bud, calling him a primate. However, Jen asks her to be patient and reminds her that the moronic pair at least joined them at yoga. Nevertheless, they agree their boyfriends must be punished for their mischievousness. While the goofy pair chill at home and nibble on Bud's toenails, Monique and Jen phone them from the park. Monique mischievously informs her boyfriend they're joining a keg party at Vasquez Lake with male swimmers. Shocked, Bud prohibits their girlfriends from going, but Monique refuses to listen and pretends to leave with the swimmers, dropping the call. Doyle seeds from jealousy, thinking about their girlfriends in bathing suits in the pool with the swimmers. As the goofy pair drives to Vasquez Lake, Bud insists they're also in on saving the environment while throwing a firecracker out the window and unintentionally killing a bunny. On the road, Bud and Doyle pass by the cylindrical enclosure of Biodome, thinking it's a new mall. When the pair reach Vasquez Lake, they realize Jen and Monique fooled them. But Bud can't help but be proud of the women's deviousness. Seeing the area trashed, the best friends reminisce about their childhood at the once clean lake. Regardless, Doyle throws his drink carelessly, so Bud picks it up to claim the purchase seal for free refills. On their way back, Doyle feels the call of nature, so they decide to stop by the supposed new mall to relieve himself. Meanwhile, at Biodome, the project's benefactor, William Leakey, delivers a speech in the groundbreaking ceremony. He introduces Dr. Noah Faulkner, a scientist who will be managing the closed environment where men harmoniously coexist with nature. When the goofy pair arrives, a guard stops them from entering the private institution. Affronted, Doyle exhibits his martial arts before Bud pulls him away to avoid a confrontation. At the same time, Dr. Faulkner introduces his crew of scientists. Geologist Olivia Biggs, entomologist T.C. Romulus, oceanographer Petra Von Kant, and agriculturalist Mimi Simpkins. Since Doyle refuses to relieve himself at the side of the building, Bud throws a firecracker at the stage, disrupting the ribbon-cutting ceremony. Amidst the chaos, the pair enters the facility, wondering why the unusual mall has no stores or food courts. So, they enter the rainforest area to look for a toilet. When Doyle relieves himself at the falls, the biodome system detects the toxins from his urine in the water system, sounding the alarm. After concluding the disrupted groundbreaking ceremony, the five scientists bid farewell as they secure themselves in the biodome for the rest of the year. Unbeknownst to them, Bud and Doyle had inadvertently joined the professionals inside and waved to the people outside. Shocked by the trespassers, Romulus partially faints as Doyle slaps one of his bugs dead, unaware of the mission to preserve the enclosed ecosystem. Although in rage, Leakey diffuses the media's uproar, denies the security breach, and claims two special scientists have also arrived to simulate a chaos theory in nature. Afterward, Faulkner receives a police report about the trespassers' identity. However, they cannot open the sealed doors to throw the pair out for one year as it risks their scientific data. Regardless, Leakey worries about his investment in the compromised project and forces Faulkner to fix it. Petra argues the two additional cargos will throw the system off balance since the dome was built for only five people. Left with no choice, Faulkner decides that Bud and Doyle must stay with them, trusting that nature will adapt. While the goofy pair throws innuendos at Mimi, Faulkner enthusiastically introduces Team Biodome. Trying to understand the duo's interests, Faulkner offers that they should stay with them in the facility to achieve their dream of fame. Shortly, Faulkner leads Bud and Doyle to the cramped storage room where they'll stay for the rest of the year. Despite their protests, Mimi and Petra give them a blanket and a pillow which Bud wins over. 
Unable to sleep on the floor, Bud and Doyle invade Mimi and Petra's room and lay beside them on their bed. When the women catch them red-handed, they scream and throw them out. The following day, Faulkner reports they have survived the first night while maintaining homeostasis, so they all cheer. But when Romulus finds Bud using his toothbrush, he complains about sharing his stuff and furiously walks out. Then, Bud clarifies they're staying in the facility against their will and without any preparation, so Faulkner decides to tour them. Moments later, the scientist leads the pair to a tower where they can see all regions of the biodome. He explains that the ecosystem's survival depends upon homeostasis, or balance within the enclosed system. When Faulkner sees Bud and Doyle smoking, he snatches it from their hands and forbids them to do everything they did at their home. Then, the scientist orders them to stay still as he climbs the tower. However, Doyle can't control his itch and breaks Faulkner's rule. As the pair starts moving around, they head to the exit door and learn from Olivia that it cannot be opened for a year. Infuriated by the stubborn duo, Olivia leaves them as they play around the jungle. Doyle finds Mimi capturing fish in the lake, learning that they'll fertilize the rice paddy to secure their food supply. Meanwhile, Bud finds Petra cultivating crops, so he shows her some yoga poses. When Faulkner finds the oceanographer distracted, he calls her to tend to the tide monitor. At Monique's home, she scolds her mother's boyfriend, Russell, for littering the house with beer cans. Suddenly, she sees her boyfriend on TV while the news covers the duo's arrival in Biodome. Stunned, Monique receives a call from Jen, who excitedly screams at the news. That afternoon, Monique and Jen visit their boyfriends at the Biodome to urge them to stay out of the biological experiment, knowing their chaotic nature. However, Bud and Doyle claim they're sacrificing for the greater good and make out through the glass wall with their girlfriends. At dinner, Bud and Doyle spit out their food, learning their soy alternatives for meat as a protein source. That night in the storage room, Doyle wakes up Bud, so the latter advises his friend to recall their childhood sleepovers to make him sleep. Sometime later, Russell shows Monique the newspaper, where a picture of Bud and Doyle with Mimi and Petra is printed on the front page. Meanwhile, Leaky shows the moronic duo a thriving on chaos t-shirt with their faces, tempting to profit from the trespassers' fame. The benefactor reiterates they're an integral part of the biodome system. Hearing this, Bud proposes making an eco-friendly protection packet, while Doyle suggests making action figures from them. Leaky listens intently, taking note of the potential sources of profit. Out of boredom, the pair reminisce about their childhood, where Bud pushed Doyle from the roof as they tried creating their fun. Later, Bud and Doyle propose planting the devil's lettuce in front of the scientists, claiming they would provide more oxygen for them. Meanwhile, at college, Monique and Jen sign Professor Bloom's shirt of Bud and Doyle. Then, Denise approaches and informs them about an upcoming three-day event at Arizona Tech to benefit the rainforest, ensuring there'll be guys and kegs involved. Fateful to Doyle, Jen initially refuses to join, but Monique convinces her that they should also have fun on their own. At Biodome, Bud and Doyle invite Mimi and Petra to join them in drinking their self-made fruit cocktail, making the women rage over the useless result of their harvest. Then, the duo bathes in the tub of an artificial rain generator while Olivia tells them off. When Faulkner addresses the media through the glass wall, Bud and Doyle steal the attention and make fun of their stay at the facility. While playing hide-and-seek, Doyle enters Romulus's workspace to hide. The entomologist tries kicking him out but fervently explains he's breeding rare Brazilian butterflies. Suddenly, Bud barges into the room and finds his target, so Doyle carelessly thrashes around and accidentally frees the insects while Romulus tries to capture them. Meanwhile, Monique and Jen arrive at the Arizona Tech when two men recognize them as Biodome Bud and Doyle's girlfriends. They invite the women to a feta at the quad tomorrow, to which they say yes, interested in their shared environmental advocacy. In an emergency meeting at Biodome, Olivia, Romulus, Petra, and Mimi complain that the moronic duo is destroying their biological experiment. Suddenly, the glass window crashes, finding the reckless pair playing golf in the rainforest. There, Leaky excitedly shows Bud and Doyle their new action figures per their suggestion. After setting up a huge flypaper, the duo calls Romulus for a surprise, revealing that they have captured his bugs. But when the entomologist finds his insects dead and plastered on flypaper, he screams in agony. That night, Faulkner locks the chaotic pair in the storage room after their troublesome charades impede their work. Starving for real food, Bud devises a plan and climbs on Doyle's back to reach the ceiling. Through the vent, they climb down a chemical storage room and open a barrel filled with junk food. After filling themselves up, Doyle sees a nitrous oxide tank and takes turns inhaling the laughing gas. Lightheaded and euphoric, the pair noisily play around the restricted room when Mimi and Petra find them, followed by an angry Faulkner. 
The following day, the frustrated scientists throw Bud and Doyle at the Biodome's desert area. Disappointed, Bud declares that they'll create their own Biodome as they try recruiting Mimi and Petra to no avail. While bargaining with the scientists, Faulkner retrieves the stairs so the pair cannot leave the desert. Not long after, Bud and Doyle embrace their fate, refusing to eat each other as they starve. Thinking they'll die soon, Doyle admits that he's why Bud's turtle died, so his best friend reveals he's the one why his aunt went insane. Meanwhile, Mimi and Petra try to persuade Faulkner that Bud and Doyle have been punished long enough. However, the lead scientist claims the pair is everything wrong in the world and refuses to take them back. While Bud captures an iguana to eat, Doyle finds a key on one of the glass doors, allowing them to leave. Outside the dome, they find their car booted and filled with parking tickets, so they phone for a pizza at the side of the road. Unexpectedly, Russell delivers the food and tells Bud and Doyle about the party at Arizona Tech with their girlfriends. To win back the girls, Bud plans to organize the biggest party ever at Biodome. Then, Bud phones his friend Roach and asks him to print out flyers for their party. At the Fete, the flyers reach Jen and Monique, suspicious of their boyfriend's scheme. Later that night, the scientists observe the invasive moths, thinking something is wrong while the system detects all hell breaking loose. When they see the large party at one of the domes, the scientists get swept into the crowd of partygoers while Faulkner gets handcuffed to a tree. Arriving at the facility, Jen and Monique are shocked to learn the party is happening inside and has disrupted the experiment. When they find Bud and Doyle, they convince them to stop the party as it's killing the biodome. However, the damage has already been done and Faulkner can't help but stare at his life's work fall apart. The following day, Jen and Monique furiously pick up trash from last night's mess and end their relationship with Bud and Doyle. Not long after, Leaky and his men arrive, learning that Faulkner is nowhere to be found. Enraged by the destroyed ecosystem, the benefactor scolds the four scientists and urges them to go home. Guildridden, Bud and Doyle ask the devastated scientists to help clean the place. As Petra declares the whole experiment as a failure, Doyle locks the door to resume the enclosed system and assumes to lead the restoration of Biodome. To show his resolve, Doyle lets Russell exit the facility and swallows the key. Unbeknownst to them, Faulkner remains hiding among the plants as his underlying mission resumes. While watching the news, Monique and Jen learn that Biodome has resumed operation. But Leaky worries about the dangerously low oxygen levels inside. Meanwhile, Bud, Doyle, and the scientists learn that there's only 1% homeostasis, so they first aim to revive plant life. Using trash from the party, the duo accelerates the photosynthetic process and filters the air. Later, Leaky informs Bud and Doyle about their broken laws and demands the key. So, Doyle shows his rear end where he tries to excrete it. When Jen and Monique arrive at Biodome, Leaky urges them to convince their boyfriends to surrender their quest. However, the women hear that Bud and Doyle have changed and are serious about their mission to save the ecosystem, so they refuse Leaky's request. Even after playing loud, compelling music from outside to lure Bud and Doyle out, the Biodome crew works harmoniously to increase homeostasis. Amidst their success, the investors receive endorsement requests for Bud and Doyle, even a letter from the Pope. Soon, a grubby Faulkner travels in the vent and ransacks the storage room for supplies for his mission. In a hidden workspace, Faulkner creates explosives with scavenged materials while claiming that he's God. In their last 10 hours, the Biodome crew worry as they have only achieved 98% homeostasis. While Faulkner takes out his explosives on the lake, Mimi and Petra make out with Bud and Doyle to express their gratitude. But a few seconds later, Bud stops the two scientists, claiming they have girlfriends and makes them leave the room longingly. Then, the duo hears someone humming and finds a secret hatch on the control panel. They see a surprised Faulkner inside the hideout, so he makes them hold the coconut explosives to avoid suspicion. The following day, the savage scientist makes Bud and Doyle scatter the coconuts around the biodome unsuspiciously. Deciding to play catch, Doyle runs farther as Bud throws a coconut his way. However, the coconut explodes upon impact on the floor, realizing it could destroy the whole place. Panicking, the Biodome crew lets the security outside know about the dangerous situation, but they fail to break the bionic glass. Left with no choice, Bud and Doyle confront Faulkner in the control room, but he has already rigged the system to heed his commands. While Bud chases Faulkner, Doyle uses the scooter in the basement to corner the scientist. When Bud fights over the detonator, Doyle sets off his trap, lunging his friend and the scientist on the flytrap. As they resume fighting, Doyle throws a rock their way, knocking Faulkner unconscious. With the detonator in hand, Bud deactivates the explosives as the biodome's homeostasis has been restored to 100% and the door opens. 
Afterward, the crew embraces in celebration, but Olivia sees Faulkner and chases him as he throws an explosive in their way. Fortunately, the Biodome crew emerges from the explosion safely as Bud and Doyle reunite with their girlfriends. On the ride home, Doyle suddenly feels the call of nature again, so they drive into a nuclear power plant to relieve himself. Meanwhile, Faulkner has escaped through the back door and flees to the Arizona desert, followed by the SWAT team. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.